Good evening, mathematicians. Let's take a look at section 5.3, all about proving triangle congruence by side angle side. Our lesson objectives, mathematicians will be able to use the side angle side, shortened to SAS, congruence theorem, and solve real life problems. So our essential question is, what can you conclude about two triangles when you know that two pairs of corresponding sides and the corresponding included angles are congruent? All right, let's start by getting familiar with this side angle side congruence theorem. It states that if two sides and the included angles of one triangle are congruent to two sides and the included angles of a second triangle, then the two sides are congruent. What does it mean to be an included angle? It's the angle formed by two sides of a triangle. So let's take a look at triangle ABC and triangle XYZ. Angle A is the included angle formed by side AB and side AC. So in other words, the angle that's in between two sides is considered the included angle. Let's take a look at triangle XYZ. Angle formed, the included angle formed by side XY and YZ is angle Y. So here we have angle Y, it's in between sides x, y, and y, z. All right, so let's look at this congruence theorem part by part. So here we have two triangles, triangle ABC and triangle DEF. And we're going to identify the three necessary parts in order to use this theorem. It'll be two sides and one included angle. Okay, let's start with our corresponding sides AB congruent to DE. So we have AB congruent to DE. The next pair of corresponding parts would be our angles. Angles A congruent to angle D. And these are the angles that are included between the two sides that we're going to use as our other two parts. Then our third corresponding parts will be the sides AC congruent to side DF. So once you have all three parts congruent, then you can conclude that the entire triangle ABC is congruent to all parts of triangle DEF. All right, we're going to prove the side angle side congruence theorem. We're given that side AB is congruent to DE, and that angle A is congruent to angle D, and that side AC is congruent to side DF. And these are the two sides and the included angle. So we want to prove that these two triangles are congruent. So step one, translate triangle ABC so that point A maps to point D as shown. This would be a translation that maps triangle ABC to triangle DB prime C prime. Next step, we will rotate triangle D, B prime, C prime counterclockwise through angle C prime, D, F so that image of ray D, C prime coincides with D, F as seen here. Since segment D, C prime is congruent to DF, so DC prime when it rotated around is congruent to DF, the rotation C prime maps on to F. Therefore, triangle D, B prime, C prime maps on to D, B double prime, F. In our final step, we will reflect triangle D double prime, F in the line through DF, as seen here, the reflection. Since D and F lie on line DF, this reflection, triangle D, B, double prime F, maps onto DEF. 
So we end up with the exact same triangle on top of itself. In conclusion, since you can map triangle ABC onto triangle DEF using a composition of rigid motions, we can conclude that triangle ABC is congruent to triangle DEF. All right, let's practice with example one, a proof using the side angle side congruence theorem. We're given that side BC is congruent to side DA and that BC is parallel to AD. And we wanna prove that triangle ABC is congruent to CDA. Start by listing all of your givens. So we have two given statements. They'll each go in their own box. So the statements above the reasons and the reason is given for both of these statements. Now since I'm using the side angle side congruence theorem, I'm going to mark an S next to each of the corresponding parts that I need in order to prove these two triangles congruent. So our first set of parts are the sides BC and DA, so I'm going to put an S label next to my first corresponding parts. Now I need my included angle and another pair of sides. My second pair of sides can always be the pair of sides that are shared between two figures. This is a common statement that can be made in proofs. So if any two figures are sharing the same side, we can always state that in the proof, as in this case, side AC is congruent to side CA. And the reason we can state that is the reflexive property of congruence. So here's my second pair of corresponding parts, which are sides. So that leaves me now with needing to prove the included angle. So let's take a look at which two sides I have identified. I have labeled and marked side AC congruent to itself. And if the first markings and now the second markings, this means that I must prove that these two angles are congruent. And I can, since I have two sides that are parallel, cut by a transversal, I have alternate interior angles, which allows me to prove these two triangles congruent. So from side BC parallel to DA, I can draw a box connecting to the statement angle BCA congruent to angle DAC. And my reason is that parallel lines implies alternate interior angles congruent. This concludes the third and final parts that I needed in my proof. I now have two sides and an included angle, and all three of these statements will point to the final box stating that triangle ABC is congruent to triangle CDA, which is what I was trying to prove. And my reason is that side angle side implies congruent triangles. You must have all three arrows pointing to this box. If you're missing an arrow, then you know you haven't proven the triangles congruent yet until you have all three necessary parts using this particular theorem, side angle side. All right, example two, we're gonna use side angle side and the properties of shapes, in this particular case, a circle and the two triangles inside of the circle. So in the diagram, side QS and side RP pass through the center M of the circle. So what can you conclude about triangle MRS and triangle MPQ? Our first set of parts, two angles. At the center of the circle, we can conclude that angle RMS is congruent to PMQ. And we know this because of vertical angles. Anytime two lines intersect, we have angles across from one another that are congruent. So our reason is vertical angles implies angles congruent. And I've labeled on the side an A. So we have one set of parts congruent. Our next two sets of parts are side MS congruent to side MQ. And then side MR is congruent to MP. And this is because all points on a circle are the same distance from the center, in other words, the radii. So all of our sides are congruent because they all represent the same radius coming from 
the outside of the circle. So this is all the parts that we need to conclude that triangle MRS is congruent to triangle MPQ because we have two pairs of corresponding sides and the included angle. So by side angle side, we can imply that we have congruent triangles. All right, more constructions. Here we are copying a triangle using side angle side. So you're gonna practice constructing a triangle that is congruent to triangle ABC using the side angle side congruence theorem. So use your compass and straight edge to follow these steps and copy triangle ABC. So pause the video to try these steps on your own. All right, so our third example here is solving a real life problem. So pause the video just to read through this text. It's also on your fill-in notes. My picture did not show up on the slide, but it is available on your fill-in notes. All right, so we're going to prove using the side angle side congruence theorem. We're going to try to show that triangle PQR is congruent to triangle PSR, which means we need two corresponding sides and the included angle. Well, we are given some information, so let's get that in our proof first. So I have two givens. I have that side RP is perpendicular to side QS, reason, given. I have that side PQ is congruent to side PS, also given. And I'm going to make an S because this is my first set of corresponding sides that are congruent. And then I can always include sides that are being shared between two figures. And the reason is the reflexive property of congruence. And I put a second S. So now I just need to have my included angle in the proof. So I'm going to connect from my perpendicular statement because when I have perpendicular sides, I have right angles. So from perpendicular statement, I can conclude that angle QPR and angle SPR are right angles. And the reason is that perpendicular lines implies right angles. Now because I have right angles, then I have congruent angles. So I connect to a new statement saying that angle QPR is congruent to angle SPR. Reason? Right angles implies congruent angles. And this concludes all the necessary parts. I have my included angle. I have my two corresponding sides. So I have three arrows, three boxes, three statements that connect to my final statement, which is triangle PQR is congruent to triangle PSR. My reason? That I have a side angle and a side that implies congruent triangles. So this concludes the proof. Now I have two proofs here that I want you to try on your own. And we'll look at them and check them in class. So pause the video here and take time to try both of these proofs. You can use any style, flowchart proof, paragraph proof, or two column proof. Good luck. So this concludes lesson 5.3. So just remember all you need is three pairs of corresponding congruent parts to prove triangle congruence by side angle side. My little Mickey, who's dressed up like Freddy Krueger, is here to remind you you just need three pairs of corresponding congruent parts.